So back in November of 2020, I did a MacBreak studio about this subject, the iPhone 12, HDR, and Fonica Pro. Since that time, there's been a great deal of more confusion, more wrong information everywhere about how to deal with clips specifically on this phone and working with them in Fonica Pro. Now, at the time, I used some clips provided by our friend iJustine because I didn't have the iPhone 12. I do now. I just came back from a trip to Guatemala where I shot a bunch of stuff in both HDR and SDR in order to demonstrate what's happening, why it's happening, and how to address it. So first let's address what's happening. If you've got an iPhone 12 or later and you go to settings and then you scroll all the way down to camera and then you select record video and then scroll down there, you'll see an option for HDR video. Notice the text down here, record up to 60 frames per second video in 10 bit high dynamic range, including Dolby Vision. We'll come back to that in a little bit. It's very important, but let's just start at the basics. Once you've enabled HDR video on the iPhone, it will shoot actually in HLG, but it will shoot much brighter, more saturated colors. Now, I can't really show you the difference between SDR or standard dynamic range and this HDR option. You've got to see it on the phone yourself. So I shot a particular scene in both SDR and HDR. Now, I can't really show you the difference because it depends on your display and my display and how it's recorded. For example, if I do a screen recording of those two different options on my iPhone, that screen recording is done in SDR and the HDR version is being tone mapped to SDR, standard dynamic range, so both clips look exactly the same. If I record my screen with another camera, you can kind of see the difference if I put those clips in an HDR project in an HDR library. Notice on the scopes how the HDR version is both brighter and more saturated. But really, you need to be looking directly at the iPhone to see the difference. And that's really the whole point of this particular feature on the iPhone, to make those video clips look better on iOS devices. So if you take a clip that you've shot in HDR on an iPhone 12 or later, and you share it, you send it to somebody and they view it on their iPhone 12 or later, or an iPad or an Apple TV, all of those different devices have the capability of displaying HDR to some extent, and they have the capability of reading the embedded metadata that goes along with that clip in order to display that information correctly. So you'll see brighter, more saturated colors on all those devices. Even on a Mac screen, it will look better than if you had HDR turned off, even though many Mac screens aren't capable of becoming as bright or saturated as these iOS devices. However, once you've enabled HDR on these phones and you bring that clip into Final Cut Pro, as we've seen, things change. So let's check it out. So when you create a new library in Final Cut Pro, by default, it's SDR or standard dynamic range. If I select this library and we look in the library inspector, we see here it says standard. If you click modify, you have the option of switching to wide gamut. I'm going to leave this at standard right now. My project is also standard dynamic range or Rec. 709. If I select this project, we can see right here it says Rec. 709. And once again, we can click modify where we could change that from this standard Rec. 709 color space to something else. We can't right now here because the library itself is a standard dynamic range library. So we'll get to HDR in a moment. I just want to talk about SDR right now. So we're in a normal default library because this is what you use most of the time for delivering in Rec. 709 for broadcast or for web. This is the, the standard way of delivering. And I have these two clips here. This first one was shot without HDR enabled on the iPhone 12. And the second one is shot with HDR enabled. So it looks blown out. Now, you have a couple of options on how to address this. And the starting point is that we're working in an SDR library because maybe we have a bunch of other clips that are SDR. So we need to conform this clip to an SDR project. That's our goal here, not to deliver an HDR, but to take this clip and deliver it in SDR. The easiest way to do it is to apply the HDR tools effect, but you can also grade this yourself. So for instance, if I just go to the color board for this clip 
for exposure, I can bring those highlights down. You can see they're all recoverable. They aren't really blown out. And then maybe I'll bring the mids up a little bit. And I'll go back and look at my other version. You can see already I'm very, very close to the SDR version by simply making an exposure adjustment. It might need a little bit of a saturation adjustment, but you can see just by using the grading tools in Final Cut, I use a color board. You can use color wheels or curves or anything else. You can essentially tone map this HDR clip to standard dynamic range. So just to be clear, we're taking all these values that can't be displayed in Rec. 709. They both aren't legal for Rec. 709. They're outside the bounds of Rec. 709 brightness level and saturation level. They're also not capable of being displayed on the particular display I'm using, which is an LG 4K display connected to a 16-inch MacBook Pro. So that's one option is to grade it yourself to get it within the Rec. 709 range. And then from there, of course, you can grade it additionally, create a look, whatever. The other option is to use the HDR tools effect which is located in the effects browser in the color category, which is just kind of a fast and easy way of doing that. So if I put it on that clip itself, we go to the video inspector, and then we have these different modes. And what we wanna choose here is HLG to Rec. 709. The reason it's to Rec. 709 is because we are in a Rec. 709 project. The reason I'm choosing HLG is because the iPhone 12 shoots in HLG. Now this might be really confusing. If we go back to that screen where we selected HDR, it mentions Dolby Vision. What the iPhone is doing is recording in HLG, but it's also including Dolby Vision metadata. But the iPhone is actually shooting in HLG, although it's bringing along that Dolby Vision metadata. More on that in a moment. So if I select this HLG to Rec. 709 SDR mode, we get a clip that immediately, without any color correction, we can see very, very closely matches the SDR version. So the purpose of using this HDR tools is to place it into the Rec. 709 color space with a correct gamma and gamut so that we can then go ahead and grade it if it needs it or if we want to. In this case, I could leave it the way it is. We see it's a perfect match with our other clip. Now, I'm gonna disable this for a moment because there's a lot of folks out there recommending that instead of doing that, you go to the Info Inspector, to the Settings View, and here there's something called Color Space Override. And a lot of folks will say, oh, if you want to fix this, just go ahead and change the Color Space Override to Rec. 2020. And indeed, that seems to do it. It definitely puts it within the correct luminance values and saturation values to put it in Rec. 709, but it really isn't a perfect match with our SDR clip. In fact, it looks kind of lousy. And that's because this color space override isn't doing a tone mapping like the HDR tools is. It's simply interpreting this clip as an SDR clip. So it really isn't correct and doesn't produce a good result. So I really recommend you don't do that. And instead, either use the HDR tools effect set to HLG to Rec. 709 SDR. And by the way, you have to kind of click on it once for it to kick in there or color grade it manually in order to get that HDR clip from an iPhone 12 into an SDR project. In fact, when you add an HLG clip to an SDR project, Apple tells you exactly what to do with it. Apply a color correction effect or apply the HDR tools effect to the clip. If you have multiple HDR clips in an SDR project, Rather than applying the HDR tools effect to each one individually, you can instead use an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is simply an empty motion title effect. You can create one with motion easily if you have motion. I'm using the one from the title inspector here from our Ripple Tools Complete uh, set of plugins. I select it right here. I press Q to place it across the clips. I can make it as long or short as I want. Then I can apply the, actually before I apply it, just notice these are all uh, blown out because they are HDR clips in an SDR project. I can apply that HDR tools effect to the adjustment layer, select the correct mode, HLG Direct 709. And now all the clips under the adjustment layer have been affected by the HDR tools effect. So useful way to get all of your HDR iPhone 12 clips or really any HLG clips into a Rec. 709 project. Okay, now, what if you want to deliver an HDR? 
more and more platforms support HDR, so it's a common delivery method. To do so, we want to create an HDR library and an HDR project. Before we do so, I'm going to turn off this adjustment layer by tapping the V key to disable it, and we see we're back to our blown out clips. By the way, under the View pop-up menu, you may have noticed this Show HDR as Tone Mapped checkbox. And you may wonder why it doesn't do anything. Well, it only works on the PQ type of HDR media, not on HLG, which this is. And just to confirm that again, with this clip selected in the Info Inspector and in the General View, we can see the color profile here is HLG Dolby Vision 8.4. So it's kind of a combination of the Dolby Vision version 8.4, the metadata combined with the HLG gamma curve. In fact, if I reveal this clip in the finder and I open it with QuickTime Player and press Command-I to get info, we can see right here the HDR type is Dolby Vision and the transfer function or the gamma curve is HLG. Okay. Now, rather than starting with a new library, we can convert this library. I'll select a library. In the Library Inspector, I'll click Modify and switch to a wide gamut HDR library. This doesn't specify here whether it's HLG or PQ. It just says wide gamut. So we've got the Rec 2020 color space as well as the broader brightness values of HDR. I'll click Change. The second step is to change our project itself. So I'll select the project we're working on. And once again, in the Info Inspector, I'll click Modify. And here we have the choice of different types of HDR. Wide Gamut is just a broader color space, but it isn't HDR. It doesn't include brighter values, just a broader color space. This is really a legacy setting back from when Final Cut Pro had Wide Gamut, but didn't yet have HDR. Here we want to choose Rec 2020 HLG because these iPhone 12 clips are HLG even though they carry the Dolby Vision metadata. I'll click OK. And now we see that our clips looked correct even on my LG display that is not capable of showing the entire uh, HDR color space, the entire brightness levels. Now you might wonder what's going on in the waveform. I'm gonna switch this to the RGB parade so we can see each channel separately. And I'm also gonna hide the vector scope to make a little more room. Normally this waveform is in IRE, but when you are in Rec 2020 HLG, this parade scope represents the percentage of brightness that the current display is capable of showing. So when it says 100 here, it's not 100 IRE. It's not the same as Rec. 709. It means this is the maximum brightness level that this particular display that I'm using is capable of showing. So I can grade in HDR to this particular display. By contrast, if I set this project to be a PQ project, my RGB parade will be measured in nits now up to a maximum of 10,000 nits, which is the spec for Dolby Vision PQ. But again, these clips are HLG, so the correct project setting for these clips is Rec 2020 HLG. So you can work in an HDR timeline connected either to the display that you're planning to master to or a proper HDR display and the RGB parade will measure the maximum brightness of that particular display. Now, when you're delivering an HDR, you may have other clips that weren't shot in this HLG mode. For instance, this clip here was shot in SDR, and this would be true for any clip from any other camera. It could have been shot in log or something else, but it wasn't specifically shot in HLG. In this case, we can grade this clip to match the other clips. And just as a reference, I have the HDR version in here as well. So I'll go to this SDR version, and once again, I'll just use the color board to increase the dynamic range. And in this case, I'll bring back my other scope so that I can compare both the brightness value and the saturation between the clips. And already, I'm very, very close with that one simple adjustment. 
I might bring the midtones up a little bit more and it looks like I need to bring the saturation down just a bit. And then very quickly, I've got a match there. So I can take a project that has primarily HLG clips and I can add in standard dynamic range clips and grade them to get them to match those HLG clips. Once you've done that, you have a couple of options for exporting your project. When it comes to exporting your HDR project from Final Cut Pro, you have two options. You can export it as straight HLG, or you can export it as HLG with the Dolby Vision metadata. The cool thing about HLG is that it's backwards compatible with ordinary displays that aren't capable of HDR. That's why it's called HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma. It will work in both HDR and SDR. If I go to the Share menu and choose a master file and go to Settings and select ProRes, notice that the color space here is Rec 2020 HLG. So if I export a ProRes master from this HDR project, I will get a straight HLG clip. However, if I instead choose Apple Devices, under the video codec, I have choices for HEVC 10-bit or HEVC 10-bit that includes Dolby Vision. So it's HLG with Dolby Vision 8.4, which is exactly what the iPhone 12 and later shoot. If I select that, notice that the color space is Rec 2020 HLG, but we're including the Dolby Vision metadata. And of course we can export 4K as well. No matter which type I export, they will look the same in my project. Here, if I zoom in a little bit, I've exported four different versions of this clip the ProRes version, the HEVC 10-bit, the HEVC 10-bit HLG with Dolby Vision, and then a version exported through Compressor. I'll explain that in just a minute. I just want to show you that they all look identical here. So the preferred export method would be Share, Apple Devices 4K, Settings, would be this one, especially if your program is going to be viewed on Apple devices because they'll read that metadata and use it to display color and brightness information to the maximum capability of that screen. Now the trick is it can take a long time to do this export. In fact, this seven second clip took two minutes and 20 seconds to encode. What you can do instead is use compressor because compressor will take advantage of hardware acceleration if you make one key change to the preset. So if I send this project to compressor, and go to settings, here's a 4K HEVC 10-bit HLG with Dolby Vision 8.4 preset. I'll duplicate the preset, then over in the inspector for video, for the encoder type, I'll change it to faster. This is the key setting that enables the CPU acceleration. Also make sure to include the Dolby Vision 8.4 metadata. If we go back to Final Cut, I added a new destination so I can go directly to that export. By using compressor, rather than going straight out of Final Cut, it reduced the export time from two minutes and 20 seconds to about 42 seconds. In QuickTime, if I look at the ProRes export version, we can see that the HDR type is HLG and the transfer function, in other words, the gamma curve is HLG. If I look at the HVC 10-bit with Dolby Vision option for exporting, here we can see the HDR type is Dolby Vision and the transfer function is HLG. So it's including that Dolby Vision metadata. Therefore, if you want to deliver an HDR using these iPhone 12 HLG clips, you use a wide gamut library, you use an HLG project, and then you can export back to that same HLG Dolby Vision 8.4 color profile. For more information, check out this Apple support article on editing HDR video recorded on iPhone 12, and this Apple support article on converting or adjusting HDR clips in Final Cut Pro using the HDR tools effect. Links in the description below. Wow, so HDR is complicated. I hope this video simplifies at least this little piece of it so that you can work with this iPhone HDR footage in your Final Cut projects. If you found it useful, consider subscribing and clicking the bell below. We produce a ton of content here on Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Apple Motion, and other subjects. You can also check out our full-length tutorials at RippleTrainer.com. I really appreciate you watching. Appreciate the support. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.